The Nigerian Bar Association has cautioned the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abuakar Malami, about his opposition to the Southwest Security Outfit Operation Amotekun. The National Publicity Secretary of the NBA, Kunle Edun, stated this on behalf of the association to Malami's statement that Operation Amotekun was illegal. Faulting the AGF, Edun said Malami should not be too legalistic on protection of lives and property. He emphasized that in civilized climes, security is everyone's business. Prominent Nigerians, including the Nobel, Laure Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shainka and an ex-chairman of the MBA, Olisa Abakoba, human rights lawyer Femi Falono and Ebu Olu Adegburowa, among others, had also kicked against the AGF's pronouncement. And joining us now in the studio is Ugo Chuku Ikako, a political analyst, to shed more light on this. Good to have you here. Good, to, good, good morning. Good, good morning good to, to you. And uh, now, I'm sure you saw that story. First of all, what are your thoughts on the whole pronouncement of Amotaikon as being illegal? Well, I think for me, um, is wherever in a democracy we always have conversations like this, especially in Nigeria, where mm -hmm. we have issues of uh, in insecurity that has uh, been around for a long time, over since 2015, a lot has happened in terms of uh, talking about the pastoral conflict, what some, mm -hmm. some people call the Flanny Hesman. So, uh, so that conflict has made insecurity uh, become a bigger issue across the south, southwestern states. So uh, at this point, it shows that there is a conversation that we're supposed to have. Okay. But because the federal government on its own part is not taking the initiative of being proactive, uh, you're seeing southwestern states to say, okay, we want to make provision to protect ourselves. And I think that's a step in the right direction. What they've done is, is writing and is allowed in a democratic setting. Uh, the AGF saying what he said, I think he said it from a part from a, uh, the, the government he represents, mm -hmm. right? because have a government that has a, a unitary approach to government, um, they don't understand the concept of uh, regionalization. They don't understand the concept that uh, in, a federal, in a federal system of government, uh, the state is not the federal that is, that is in charge of security. Mm -hmm. But bring it down to the uh, municipal level, talk about the local government where you have uh, the mayor and the rest of it. So uh, the, the, the system of federalism that we practice in this country is not, is not perfect. And conversations like this are, is what is supposed to push us into having a conversation to break down some of these things because there's some responsibility that the federal shouldn't be having. Uh, there's no business where uh, the governor should be the number one person that is in charge of the security in his state, not the, not the president, because mm -hmm. the president is from Abuja. And it should be a person that controls, okay, what happens and rest of them. So for me, the Southwest is taking a good initiative and, and it's something that we'll keep talking and we'll keep exploring. But I think for me, this is one of the most important things that's happened to us as a country since uh, 2015 because for, for the first time, we're seeing state come together and say, this is what we want and the federal government is, gonna, is opposing it. So what is going to happen at, at the end of the day, if they can't find rooms to have a conversation to settle this state out amicably, they'll go to the court. Mm -hmm. And most likely when the court, whatever the court decide, will push the frontiers of our democracy further. And this takes me to my next question, which is over time we've heard even the president himself, vice president, and some you know, to, uh, high profile politicians saying that Nigeria's challenges, uh, it's not what the government can handle alone, insecurity inclusive. Now, why does it seem like um, with this statement uh, from the AGF, does it seem like they are not happy with this intervention, so to speak, or they do not, does it imply that the government does not even need this intervention? No, the government needs this intervention. It's clear, it's, it's, it's as clear as the sky. Uh, anybody that is trying to say anything contrary to that is being, is being dishonest. Mm -hmm. Because what we have right now, the security uh, structure we have in Nigeria, especially the internal security architecture, it doesn't work. All right, state uh, insecurity is getting worse. So if state is saying, okay, for the first time, the southwestern state is leading this conversation. I think this happened. This hasn't happened in a long time. All right. So he said, we want to do this thing to make, to help to key into what, whatever federal government thing that they are doing in Abuja. Mm -hmm. to help. So I think it's the right conversation. My position is that people need to understand that. Uh, for example, let me break some things down. We we'll have a president. Uh, uh, President Buhari, all right? President Buhari is from the class of 1966. So from the, the class of 1960s, some of them are still alive. Like a few of them, except President Obasanjo, that has like a federalist mindset. So President, uh, President Buhari is among those people in that school of thought, whatever they believe is a unitary setting to Nigeria. So whenever you mention any conversation that talks about regionalization, that talks about having state, giving state more power to do mm -hmm. things, for his mind, he's thinking secession, he's thinking things that make it, what are these people trying to do? Are they trying to form their own government? But that is not true. So what the AGF is saying is that he, he's 
given us the mindset of the, of the, of the, of the president. Because, mm -hmm. for example, the vice president, Jamie Osibanjo, is from the Southwest. And we know that for a long time, the Southwest have been talking about regionalization, talking, uh, talking about it. So it's not something that he just woke up to, to start that conversation. He's been there for a long time. So if you ask uh, uh, Vice President Osibanjo, um, I think he's going to echo what uh, uh, the governor of Fire, uh, Fire Me, the governor of Kitea has said, or the go uh, governor of Mackinac of But mm -hmm. he can't say that because at the end of the day, he is working with the president. And whatever the president says, what is going to happen. So it's not a big, it's not, it's, it's a big issue. Issue, but for us as a country, I think it's a step in the right direction. It's a conversation that we must have if, if we want to make Nigeria to continue moving, to continue going forward. Because if that happens, now start talking about how can states start forming uh, an economic unit. We can have like something like a Southwest economic unit. It works, so it helps, so it, it can help us integrate better as a country, it can help us uh, find approaches that will make us safer and better. So I think it's a good one. It's just that the, the people that are the presidency, the Abakari, the president, they don't understand this, and they see it from a different way. So I, I, I expect them to go have like a political conversation in a closed door meeting, find a way to solve this thing. But I don't think they would do that. So I trust the court, but I still have issue with the court because we'll have a court that listings that whatever they've done so far is like to please the presidency. Mm. So there's a lot of political conversation that will go on here. But for the first time, we could see that some of the Southwest, a lot of the Southwest, uh, Southwest governors are on this, uh, except Babaji Baba Sangolu, by, by his body language, I don't think his godfather has allowed him to be part of it. So for, for, for now, I think it's the right conversation. I think it should be carried on. Now we can see there's a disco disconnect, you know, between what the, the um, state governors want, yeah. the south uh, south state governors want, and what the uh, federal government is saying. Yeah. Does that imply that probably they didn't do their homework? Is it that you know we've not dotted, they've not dotted their eyes and crossed their t's to get to this point where after the launch you pro you just suddenly say, oh, it's illegal? Well, I don't, I don't think I don't know. No, I don't think so because uh, you have you have. The vice president is from the southwest. He has the ears of the president. He lives in the same place in Asuro with him. So, and uh, you have Fayemi, that is one of the ranking official members in Nigeria Governor's Forum. So you have Martin there himself. So I think what we're seeing is like the presidency trying to tell them that, yeah, I know people want to do this, but at the end of the day, there's like a superior power behind mm -hmm. you. There's no way when they've gone for their fake meetings, they've met in couple of, in wherever they meet at night or wherever they meet in the daytime. So I feel they've had that conversation. What we're seeing, maybe when they had that conversation, the president was okay with it. And so, suddenly. And suddenly, yeah, it's a change of mind. It's a change of mind because it's not just the president. There are people that are behind the president. There are people that have controlled the activities of the president. We've, we've talked about it a couple of times here, yeah, the cabals and the rest of them. They will, they will go back to the president and say, if you're giving these people room to do this, maybe a, the, the Southeast will wake up and say they want to do something like that. The, the South will come and say they want to do something like mm -hmm. that. So already they start see, already it becomes worrisome for them. They didn't see they didn't see that part. But the truth is that it's not supposed to be worrisome. Uh, if all, if Nigerians will ever work again, we we'll have to find a way to go back to the regionalization the, what that happened under the Awolo was the Michael Obara because that is when state took responsibilities for themselves and stop and start working. Because what we we'll have is a filibuster federalism mm. where a state governor will stay in his house. On the 26th or 28th of the month, there will be a ladder coming from Abuja. So there is no incentive for him to work. There is no incentive for him to improve and make the state better. But when you have state thinking for themselves, if you have state putting act plans, so it, it, gives them, it gives them much more to do. So your task will not waste. So for me, I think it's an important conversation that will help in our, our democracy, our federalism, and, and our growth as a people. Now let's move a bit uh, forward from this conversation. As soon as this was launched, we heard a lot of people commending uh, the launching of Operation Amoteko. Yeah. And we also heard uh, Nam Dikano saying that he's going to bring a million Biafrans to support the operation. How feasible is this? How practical is this? Nam Dikano is a clown, right? So uh, he shouldn't be taken serious. He has no, he doesn't, he doesn't, he, he speaks for himself and for his, his group of people. He's not, he's not, uh, he's not the governor. So, and the, the way he is, no, nobody's because he hasn't sorted out his court issues and rest of them in the country. And practically, you can say he's a fugitive because he ran away. So at the end of the day, you, are you coming to have a negotiation with the Southwest governors? It doesn't make sense. So for him, every opportunity, is, every opportunity he sees, he wants to say something that is not that is not relevant. All right? You had a movement. You had, you had a group that was at a point that was one of the most that was mo one of the most talked wherever I talk to conversation in this country, you could have that point to start having this conversation, but you made it all about yourself. Mm -hmm. So now, because if he was able to do that, he could have asked people in this country to, to vote in terms of uh, regionalization, in terms of having gov government work in that place. He can as well as ask your people to go out and vote, to do all these things. That is how a democracy works, all right? So he didn't do all that, and now you think that you can just wake up, come from wherever you are, maybe Israel, London, to come and tell Southwest governor, they will pick you and send you to Abuja. So and we don't even have statistics of how, who are Biafrans, how many Biafrans do you have, so to speak, and to say you're offering a million it's, of it's, them. Like I said, it's a clown. Right? I'm, 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 from the, I'm from the south, southern eastern part of Nigeria. So I say that someone that sometimes feel disrespected with some of the things that you say. Right, because it's not a, it's not about saying things. It's not it's not about it's about how are you coming, but because can easily say this thing, have a passport, you can fly away. 
a lot of us done. Mm. Right? We just finished celebrating the Biafra, uh, the fifties of Biafra. So a lot of people were hot. So when so, some in the past, when you make some turn, say some things, you may, it, it's easy for you when you have a, another passport to get away. It's easy for you when you're a high profile person to get away when all these things start happening. But other people will suffer. So if you feel, if you are really interested in the Southeast conversation, if you are interested in making the, the, the place better, mm -hmm. you should come back to have conversation in terms of how do we make voting work? How do we make governance work? How do we make people vote? So that is how you do that. And easily, when you have your vote, if you have, if, if your vote is up to one million, that means they can practically control election in the Southeast. Mm -hmm. right? They can vote and say, if governor, if you're not performing well, we'll remove you in the next four years. And that is how it's supposed to be. So he's not a serious person. Southwest people shouldn't pay him attention. The most important thing is that for now, the Southwestern governors, hopefully, I, I think maybe in the next couple of days, uh, with a, lot, a, little, a little bit of pressure from other southwestern governors mm -hmm. about Judith Sawalu, we came because what he said, it seems like his godfather has not given approval to do to part of this movement. But at the end of the day, it's a good one for, for our democracy for in terms of regionalization because what happens that at the end of the day, if this thing happens, because I, I foresee them going to court, it might get to a spring level, to, they might get to, spring, to uh, the spring court in trying to adjudicate this issue. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is that this issue will help us to push conversation around our democracy, regionalization, and to help make government better. So just for them to put out all these, uh, all these in place, I think everything will take shape. And finally, I hear you talk about decentralization of power and yeah. regionalization. How do we come to the point where we have a collaboration between the federal government and the state government and see a synergy as opposed to this kind of competition, so to speak? Well, I think we've missed that, missed that for now, and uh, maybe the next election, all right? Because I, it's, it's about mindset. I, 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 I think it's going to be very difficult to convince President Buhari. So, but the truth is that uh, Nigeria is not cast on stone. Mm. Every every country, everything is based on negotiation. Everything is based on negotiation. So, and uh, uh, some people tell you that any conversation about negotiation is, is secession. That's not true. Under Basanjo, we, we gave out we gave out Bakasi to Cameroon. And that happened in a democratic setting. We negotiated that. So Nigeria is negotiable. Nigeria, people can have conversation about, okay, how do we improve our country? How do we get regions to work? How do we get people to work? We, we, can, we can all stay in Nigeria as one country, all right, but have a system where each federation is working better, each Southwest has their own thing working better, all tied into the goals or whatever the aspiration of the federal government is at that point. Mm -hmm. But the issue is that we'll have a president that has a fixed mindset that comes from the 1966 class, the class that led the Civil War and, and the rest of them. So it's going to be difficult for him to have this conversation. And also the people around me, doesn't, I don't think he listened to his vice president as he should. All right, so the upper carriers and the rest of them are more in control. So if you have, if you have the vice president, if the vice president has his ears, it's easy to, for him to let him understand, have this conversation, because if we can do this, then Nigeria can start moving forward a bit. Thank you so very much, Ugochuku. Thank you for having uh, me. We've been talking to Ugochuku Ikako, who is a public affairs analyst.